<clears throat> I feel good. So, so, so good. Crisp. Clear. Connected. Fulfilled. Loved. Grateful. Satisfied. At peace yet full of vigor. These are the words written by my son, Corey Roussel, who died five months ago. Hello, my name is Denise Everett Roussel. And 35 years ago, I stood at a podium similar to this one at our L.W. Higgins commencement address as valedictorian. And as we commenced our lives, we were filled with aspirations, dreams, and some serious plans to make it out there in this big, wide world. Some of us didn't, however, realize the courage it would take to face the adversity along the way. But the reality is, if you're afraid of adversity, you're afraid of growth, because you have to go through it in order to get to it. My question for you today is, are you afraid of adversity, of growth? Let's face it, nobody likes hard times, but it's the adversity that forms us, the refiner's fire that burns away the chaff, leaving behind the goal that is our life. Eleven years ago, I found myself at a support group for families, doing some work on myself. And I found out that my biggest character flaw was fear. It was fear that ruled my life. Fear that told me how to live, or actually how not to live. Told me where to go and where not to go limited my thinking, my scope, and my perspective. It directed how I served myself, others, and God. And I found out that it was fear that caused me to want to control my environment. So that way, I would never have to be hurt again. And that same fear caused me to want to control my family and make them walk the straight and narrow. But I soon found out that we can't control anybody except ourselves. And even that is kind of difficult. I was faced with a decision to ignore the little girl cowering in the corner who was me or to love and nurture her back into a healthy life. I chose to face my fears. And it began the process of learning how to let go of fear. For me, it was the beginning of the crucible experience. But it didn't, begin, it didn't end there. I'm blessed to have been married for nearly 32 years to my husband, Ross, and I have three remarkable children. Landon, 29, Corey, 27, and Bethany, 23. And although I love all of my children immeasurably and unconditionally, it was through Corey's life that I've experienced the most growth and change. Standing before you today, a very different person than I was 35 years ago, 11 years ago, last year. With each difficult thing that Corey experienced, addiction, imprisonment, near fatal bicycle accident, automobile accident, and finally death, 
My life has become richer and stronger. It seems odd that the things can, that can be perceived as the most horrible that can happen in our lives can become the most beautiful. For example, when Corey was imprisoned under a charge of transporting an illegal alien across the border, he chose to transmute his prison sentence to a time of personal transformation. And guess who else became transformed? Yes, me. He turned his prison cell into an ashram, a college classroom, a temple, a gathering place. He read, wrote, meditated, fasted. He wrote many, many letters and introduced me to ideas like God permeates and comprises all. An ocean of potential and energy that connects us all. He shared with me books like Eckhart Tolle's A New Earth. He showed me how important perspective is. In one letter he shared while he was in solitary confinement, he spent 95% of his time in one spot, meditating, reading, writing. And during that time, he wrote, speaking of enjoyment, the past few days have been so fun. Who would know? Another time, he also shared, while in solitary, people come by all the time asking you how you're doing to make sure you're not killing yourself. And the CEO came by one day, and she said, how are you? And he said, excellent. She said, well, you can't be excellent. You're in prison. And he said, so are you. And then she said, well, I get to go home. And he said, so do I. All right. <laughs> Probably one of the biggest lessons that I learned about learning perspective was that I was able to see a bigger picture when I learned about my son's death. Now, don't get me wrong. Losing a child is one of the hardest things that anyone has to endure. But the pain that I feel today is one of acceptance of what is and a deep knowing that something much bigger is happening than the death of my son. After Corey got out of prison, he began integrating his newfound wisdom into his life. He saw his life's purpose as connecting in love with each other. And he tried to share, help us to experience what he was experiencing. Eventually, he chose to live out in nature, intentionally homeless in the green belt of Austin, sleeping in a hammock, and taking daily waterfall massages in the healing waters of Barton Springs in Austin, Texas. He was an integral part of dance and, and authentic relating communities. And he did things to change people's mindset about homelessness. One thing that he did, and this is his sign, he held up a sign just to encourage people that said, just be loved loved. Another thing that he did, he stood on his corner and he held up a sign like this one that says, reverse panhandling. When people came by, they rolled down their window with this puzzled look, he threw money in their car. <laughs> well, of course, they said, I don't need this. He said, neither do I. Then he laughed and had a great time changing people's perspective. 
The last few months of his life, he called me with an urgent message, and he said, Mom, it is our due diligence. It is our responsibility to document our life's inspiration and truths by which we live. And so he started a project. He wrote his project, his document, and I wrote mine. And for his birthday, I surprised him by publishing his document into a book, which when we heard about his death, we decided we needed to share this book. We've since distributed over 500 copies. And if you'd like one, I have some for sale tonight. You can see me. Today, I'm passing along his legacy of love and compassion by forming an organization called Corey's Dream, Be the Change, whose mission is to inspire others to be love. Be compassion, be authentic, be present through projects including books, programs for the homeless, prison outreach, and retreats. So I want to ask you again, are you afraid of adversity, of growth? Don't be afraid, my friends. Instead, face your fears. Life is beautiful. I feel so good. Crisp, clear, connected, fulfilled, loved, grateful, satisfied. Peace to you, my friends. Thank you.